In this video we're going to do examples 4 and 5, calculating the mean and standard deviation. We've already done examples 1, 2 and 3. This is example 3. Okay, so we're going to start off with example 4. Um, but before that, I guess let's just have a quick uh, reminder of what standard deviation actually is. So when we get this number, it's going to be a measure of how spread out a set of data is, how spread out a, a set of numbers are. So for example, when we look at our, our sunflower heights, how spread out are these heights? Are they mostly about the same height or are they really uh, short sunflowers or are they really tall short sunflowers, right? So that's what standard deviation is. And I'm sure there's lots of ways of measuring how spread out a list of numbers are. But this is the standard way that the whole world uses. And so if we all use this method across the world and we can communicate with each other. And so when we say a standard deviation of two, then we know everyone understands what that means. Okay. Um, so it was, again, where to come from, made up, made up by a mathematician called Carl Pearson in 1893. And the world has been using it ever since. This is a simply a man-made thing. It's, it's, you know, it's not found in nature. And, um, so let me give you two examples of, of common standard deviation. So if you take heights of women, most women are five foot five, but it varies a lot. So we could say that the mean height of women is five foot five with a standard deviation of three inches. Now we're going to talk about the normal distribution soon. What the normal distribution is, and there's a preview of it. If you take the heights of women, um, basically if you do a little this kind of a bell graph here. This bell graph represents a lot of things in the world. Heights of men, heights of women, um, all sorts of things. Heights of trees, who knows, weights of things. So, and, and right here in the middle, if we put, it would be the mean, right? So this is called a normal distribution. I'll show you what it means in a minute. So, so, um, on the, this is like the x-axis here. It doesn't really have a y-axis. I'll explain what the braille curve is in a minute. But this is the, the, the x-axis in this case would be height. Or the height of, of, a, of, a, of, let's say, a particular woman. Okay, now the mean height is 5 foot 5 inches, right? And, um, Saying that the standard deviation is three inches, what does that mean? Standard deviation of three inches means if you add three inches to get to five foot eight, five foot eight inches. If you go to here and then go three inches below to get to five foot two inches, okay. And let's say we have this 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 red area here. Okay, so what the standard deviation being three inches means that simply 68% of women are in between five foot two and five foot eight. Okay. Now, another if you go another standard deviation up, five foot eight inches plus three gives us five foot eleven inches. Okay, and that goes there. And if I take three away from five foot two, I get down to four foot eleven, right? Four foot eleven inches. Okay. What does that mean? Um, what we know is that if you take this green plus the red area, or we'll just make the whole thing green just for fun. In between two standard deviations from the mean, again, this is the mean mu. Okay. This is um, one standard deviation to the right. This is minus one standard deviation to the left. That's five foot two. This is plus two standard deviations to the right. This is minus two standard deviations to the left. What we know is that 95% of women are between four foot eleven and five foot eleven. Okay, so that's that. That's and that's why this this um, formula is is useful is because you can get a big sample and uh, you, you wouldn't be able to to calculate this three inches you know you wouldn't be able to cal to um, 
get all the heights of women in the entire country, but you might get, say, a thousand or five thousand or ten thousand, and then you could use a computer to, to with this formula to calculate the standard deviation of your three inches, and then you can figure out what's significantly tall, what's significantly short, what's average, and and so on, and then that goes for many different things. So here's another example: um, a newborn baby is six pounds weight, which is below the average of 7.5 pounds okay um, you know um, so so like is that baby that six pound weight is that particularly um, light or 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 is it normal or what well we know that newborn babies have a mean weight of seven pounds with a standard deviation of one pound and so again here's a preview of a normal distribution which is this bell curve Thing. and it's not a it doesn't have a y axis so to speak but it has an x axis which would be the birth weight of babies okay and if we the mean is right there in the middle and the mean mu in this case is 7.5 pounds okay 7.5 pounds and um, the standard deviation is one pound. So if we go over one pound, we would have 8.5 pounds. Okay. And if we go down one pound, one pound less would be 6.5. And so, given the information that you might read uh, in a newspaper or in a scientific uh, uh, paper or or research or anywhere that says that the standard deviation of something is what it is, you can immediately say, okay, that means that 68% of newborn babies weigh between 6.5 and 8.5 pounds. Okay, so this is really the kind of average uh, kind of uh, range, right? So, and the world agrees that you kind of have to be outside of 95% uh, to be unusual. So, um, up to 9.5 would be another standard deviation, and down to 5.5 pounds would be another standard deviation because remember the standard deviation is one pound so I'm just going down another one pound on each side and now we have this green area which goes from 5.5 pounds all the way up to uh, 9.5 pounds and this would be the 95 percent range so 95 percent of newborn babies would between would be between 5.5 and 9.5 pounds so any baby that's kind of less than that less than 5.5 pounds or more than 9.5 pounds that would be unusual and so you would think okay um, um, small parents um, premature birth uh, maybe malnutrition who knows what so it, it doesn't mean it's it's necessarily unhealthy but it just indicates oh that's unusual and and so this is really what standard deviation is all about is trying to figure out what is unusual so the mean is all about what's the exact average well my baby was 7.5 pounds weight that's perfectly average but is the six pound baby unusual that's my question to you based on what we just talked about is a six pound baby unusual the answer is the six pound baby is not unusual because it, it, it falls right here in the 95% range. Okay, so there's nothing unusual about that, right? Six pound baby. So so really, it, it's it's outside of the 95% that the world generally agrees that that's kind of unusual and that needs to be looked into. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it's, it's a significant thing. And so that's where we get the term statistically significant. And we'll see more of that later. Okay, so let's go to example four and calculate the standard deviation for our sunflowers. Okay, so we've taken these samples. Now we've already done this. We've done the calculations for mean and standard deviation. So I would encourage you to press pause and get the mean and then fast forward the video and check if you got the same thing as me. So press pause and get the mean. Okay, I've 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 uh, I'm going to do it now really quickly because I'm I'm hoping you can do this yourself by now. So I'm going to do it as fast as I can. So we're just going to add them all up. And we're going to divide by how many there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to put that in a calculator. 
And when I put this in the calculator, I should get 640. Okay, and then divide that by 10, and my mean should be 64. So press pause and do this yourself. If you haven't done it, do it yourself. And make sure that that's correct. It is 64. Okay. So now we need to calculate the standard deviation. So I'm going to go down. So I have space up here for calculating, and I'm going to do the standard deviation. And we need a big square root. Okay. So we take each number, we subtract the mean, and then we square it. So it's take x1, so the first number will be 60, right? 60, subtract the mean, then square it. Then take the next number, 61, subtract the mean, and square it. Then take the next number, which is 58, subtract the mean, and square it and keep going like this. So please press pause on the video and try to get this yourself. And I'm going to go quite quickly because I, I hope you can do this by now. 38. So I'm going to go quite quickly. So press pause if you need more time. Uh, 69. And almost ran out of space. Almost ran out of space. Okay, so I need to move this guy kind of over here, like that, right? So, and th this whole thing is going to be then divided by how many numbers we have, which was 10, 10 numbers, right? So we get each one in turn, 64, 60 minus 64 is negative 4, and then we got to square that guy. 61 minus 64 is negative 3, we have to square that, and so on, right? So again, please feel free to press pause and try this yourself. See if you can get the right answer. Skip the video ahead if you like and see if you got the right answer. Two squared plus zero squared plus negative five squared plus one squared, right? And when I square each one, just be careful with the negatives, because remember negative four squared is actually negative four times negative four, which is in fact positive sixteen, okay? Similarly, negative three is what? It's negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. Okay. So press pause again and see if you can finish from here. If you're at this point, please press pause and do it yourself. I'm going to go as quickly as I can. Four zero twenty five and one squared is one. Negative five squared is twenty five. One squared is one. Do we have ten numbers? One two three four five six seven eight nine ten. We do. Hopefully this is right. Um, so in the calculator we'll add them up. Plus nine plus thirty six plus thirty six plus twenty five plus sixteen plus four plus zero plus Plus one. So it is indeed 168. So our standard deviation is the square root of 168 over 10, which is the square root of what's 168 over 10? Sixteen point eight, right? So we get the square root of 16.8 and we're getting 4.0987 
And for goodness sakes, what are we? What does this mean in real life? Let's think about the rounding here. What do you think you'd round this to? We're looking at a, a bunch of, of sunflowers in a field. We've only picked ten. So first of all, we should probably have picked at least, um, you know, a good number, maybe fifty, to get a good sample, uh, or even a hundred. So ten is a very small sample. That's the first problem. The second problem is. You know, who cares about many, many decimal points? We're just talking about lengths of sunflowers. What's the big deal, right? So, I mean, in real life, you'd probably round that to what? We're talking about inches. These are inches, by the way. 60 inches would be 5 feet, 61 inches, 5 foot 1, and so on. So you'd probably round that, that to what in real life? To inches, right? So about 4 inches, all right? So we have a mean of 64 inches, which is equal to how many feet? 12 and 64 goes five times, five foot four inches, and a standard deviation of four inches, four inches. So, we have a mean of five foot four inches, standard deviation of about four inches for our sunflowers.